and some soldier stories on this Memorial Day, a filmmaker's race against time to capture their memories of war. This is the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. One filmmaker does not expect to set any box office records. He just wants to make sure that Americans never forget the soldiers' stories from America's biggest war. As Wyatt Andrews tells us, it is a race against time to capture their stories. Good morning. Larry Capetto. Larry Capetto isn't just looking for a few good men. I just want you to relax today. He's looking for every World War II veteran he can find. Were you in the Battle of the Bulge? He is taping their recollections of war and weaving them into documentaries. Never forget. Five films so far, all of them on World War II. We had a job to do and we were doing it. By God, we went out there and did it. And in all of them, these voices, the voices of the vets themselves, tell the story. Death was there on the beach. You could smell it. There was only three of us left in the entire company of 250 men. Many of the veterans are reliving a personal hell for the first time. Everything was gone. This veteran's twin brother died beside him. I should have died with him. I wanted to die. I really did. Just my life had ruined. Half of me died when he died. When people watch my films, I want them to feel like me on the other end of that camera, getting that personal side of war, you know, going down those rope ladders, landing on those beaches. Capetto's search for these surviving veterans has been relentless. In four years, he's interviewed almost 400 combat veterans, assembling one of the largest oral histories ever recorded of Americans at war. There were hundreds of thousands of, of bullets. One of the most compelling of those stories came from D-Day veteran Lewis Johnson, a Navy vet who manned a machine gun as he landed on Omaha Beach. It was the worst day of my life. Johnson and Capetto are now a team, sharing these stories at schools. Capetto showing students the taped history and Johnson being history. What do you think you told them that they needed to know? The carnage, the, the killing, the maiming, uh, the blood. You don't get that in history books. After four years in Iraq, America has lost 3,300 lives. But on D-Day, there were 3,000 killed within hours. For the students, the enormity of that sinks in. It's like you relive the event with them. To know that so many men gave up their life just for us, they gave me a deep, deeper appreciation. Okay, Joe, right in the camera. Go ahead. As he tapes these interviews, Capetto asks these veterans to salute, and they don't hesitate. He believes it's more than patriotism. When I see those veterans salute, that's what I feel like. I feel like they're saying goodbye. They've done their service to our country. On Memorial Day, we honor those who have died for America. But Capetto isn't waiting for death. Interview by interview... The night before you went in on D-Day, where were you? And what he's honoring these veterans right now. Do you consider yourself a hero? <laughs> no. Wyatt Andrews, no. CBS News, Monroe, Louisiana.
here I find myself in yet another hotel room. It's March 21st, 2012. I started my work in January of 2003, so it's been over nine years. Um, many memories. I've been reflecting a lot on my veterans and the work I've done. Um, I've done about a thousand interviews in those nine years, taking me all over the country, Canada, France three times, Guam, Iwo Jima, Japan, and it's been an amazing journey, what can I say? It's been difficult losing the veterans that I've lost, and I continue to lose. When I started my work, 1,500 World War II veterans were dying every day. The statistics probably a bit lower now, but um, needless to say, there's an urgency about my work. It's going to be a great day today. I'm excited about seeing Lewis Johnson again and working with him. He's become my adopted father over the years. He's a wonderful man. D-Day veteran, World War II. He's getting older though. It's sad to see him getting older. It's hard to see him getting older. He's 88 years old. It's going to be wonderful working with him at the high school. The kids will love him. Maybe not as much as I do. We're in the elevator now, getting ready to go to the car. Breakfast looks pretty good, yummy. Okay, could I get a receipt for my room? Sure. Or, or just whatever you do when you check out? And what's your last name? Capetto, C-A-P-P-E-T-T-O. It's uh, Wednesday morning, Denver, Colorado. We're on our way. Motion X is calculating your route. Proceed to the highlighted route. Now turn right.
and a filmmaker from Grand Junction, Colorado, is creating a documentary which pays tribute to the men who fought on that day. This morning, Larry Capetto is in France for the 59th anniversary, and he joins us on the phone this morning. Good morning, Larry. Bonjour. Good morning from France, <laughs> Gary and Kyle. Right now we're on video. I just want to thank you on camera for what you've done for our country and for letting me come to your house. Beautiful, beautiful home here, Mercer Island, Washington. And uh, you've lived here all your life. Yep. You were born here. Yep, I was. And we're going to take a tour of the house in a minute, but um, he was 89 years old and I met him in Omaha Beach in 2004 with his wife Charlotte on June 7th. And he walked out onto the beach with me for the first time since you were there in 1944. That's true. And uh, you keep talking about surviving and being a survivor. Um, you're an amazing person to me. <laughs> and I know you're not going to call yourself a hero, but you're one of my heroes, and I, I can't thank you enough. And uh, I just, I'm blessed to be here with you today. On, on June 6th, of all days, to all be days. here with you. Yep. It's kind of unique, and I think it's kind of special. It's special for me. Yeah, for sure. um, I never served in the military. I've always felt guilty about that, but... Um, I think with the work that I'm doing now, I feel like I'm doing something that's helping our country without, and our well, young kids. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Wow, so many thoughts over the years working with this project. So reflected the last couple of years and losing my veterans. It's like when I see a picture of one of my veterans that have passed away, um, it's, it's haunting. It absolutely is haunting for me, and I miss these guys. I tell stories about some of these guys, and they're gone. It's like, you know, wow. But, you know, it's kind of sad to me Veterans Day is over, but this, today is Veterans Day Observed. But still, people wake up tomorrow, go on with their lives, and I continue my trek. I've, my journey of uh, honoring our veterans and educating our younger generation that freedom is never free. How can you ever overdo it or emphasize that enough? I don't think you can. So this is some of the behind the scenes stuff. This is the stuff that's not so glamorous. And I'm very humbled to stand up here among what I consider a room full of heroes. It just brings me to tears, you know, when you introduce these guys. It's very hard when I lose a veteran. I feel like I'm fighting my own war, John. I've got my brigade or my battalion and, and a week doesn't go by when I don't get an email or a phone call from a widow who just lost her loved one. And that flag, to me, it represents freedom, absolutely. But you know what? This flag also represents to me all the veterans that have served our country. I believe the United States of America is the only country in the world where there's not a waiting list to get out of. Everybody wants to come to America and you know why? Because we have this thing called freedom. Larry, I want to ask you, when you talk to kids, when you, when you talk about the interviews you have done over 10 years, what stands out to you? What are the stories that, that I mean, there's so many moving stories. Uh, I, I, I'm not suggesting anybody gets desensitized to this, but what really still moves you when you think about what you've heard? Well, the sacrifices for our country. I mean, in combat, they tell me there's no fear in combat. It's after the combat there's the fear. And, you know, fighting for your flag, fighting for freedom, well, when you're in combat, you're not thinking about that. But 60 years later, I come into the lives of these veterans, and the last two questions I'll ask them is, what does the American flag mean to you, and what is freedom? 
freedom mean to you? And that's when they begin to cry. You ask a young person today, what does freedom mean to you? They give you a blank stare. So our goal, again, is to educate our younger generation as to why we're free. Challenge them with a thought. You're born in a free country, but do you ever think about why you're free? Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. I'm standing for you, Brian. <laughs> That's good. Charlotte Douglas International Airport. All my guests, mouthwash, peppermint, feminine needs if you need them. And welcome, welcome to my restroom. Awesome. What's your name? Diana. Thank you. My name is Larry. I just first like to say, um, Bill, it was an honor to work with you, and I mean that from my heart. Um, I'll probably get emotional here, but you know, I love you, and you've been a, a great inspiration to me since I met you. Me and you, you, I want you to know that. And I don't take lightly what we've shared together the last couple of days. We've talked to probably a couple thousand students here, and when you see tears in the eyes of a teenager, you touch them. And we saw so many tears today, and I am just amazed by the reception that we have gotten in these two schools and uh, history's best learned from those that were there the teachers tell me and I think we have done that here with our video and with Bill and to have Bill here today has meant the world to me and um, my sincere hope is that we can continue to work together in this and bring this message to our kids. Our younger generation needs to learn of the sacrifices that have gone before them so they can better appreciate all veterans and the freedoms that we share. We almost forgot Bill this morning. Oh, good morning, Dallas. He's just got the one bag. Are He's you traveling with him? No, no, He's I'm by myself. So okay. I requested special assistance. I thought maybe you could help. Yeah, is this his bag? Yes, yeah, just it is. Bag. Hey, okay. bud, be careful. Hey. Good luck. Are, are we saying goodbye? Yeah, I'll probably. Say, I'm going to say see you later. Be careful. Okay. And I'll be in touch. I'll be right here. Some of you from this class to come over here by these blue chairs. We want to interview you shortly. It won't take long. If you're late to class, Bill will write you an excuse and you'll get out. <laughs> 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 
turned that one back on me, didn't she? <laughs> This week, all of our students in grades 6, 7, and 8 have seen Iwo Jima, Return to Iwo Jima, Volume 4. Um, they've seen the entire documentary. Um, today in class, this is the day before our Veterans Day program, they were developing questions to ask Mr. Schnull and you and Mr. Lopez. And um, I can tell you, I sat in in probably five or six of the social studies classes and the documentary had a powerful effect on the students and the teachers. I had one social studies teacher tell me, he said, I didn't cry until I had to watch it the third time and by the third time I just couldn't control myself and he said the, it's been very powerful with our students. So I think that it will have the desired effect. We also have 92 parents and grandparents, veterans, who are going to be recognized tomorrow. So between that and the documentary, I think the students are getting the idea of, of really what price has been paid for, for our freedom. And sometimes the younger generation doesn't really see it. I can tell you what the most interesting thing about the video is to some of the kids. When they hear an older person talk, they don't realize how young they were when they were in the war. And at the end of Return to Iwo Jima, when each of the soldiers saluted and they showed the picture of them when they were young, and the kids could see how handsome the soldiers were and how pretty the girls were and how young they were, I, I think there was a realization these aren't old folks, they were young. And I don't think sometimes when the older generation talk, the students realize when I was there, I wasn't old. I was young, just like you, and, and I think the students felt that, and that was one. Mm -hmm. See the kids peeking in the middle right up? Yeah. The kids are excited. They are. Says. They are very excited. They're I'm pumped. Gonna, let's show my new ID. I'm now oh, a whipper. I'm now an official whipper. All right. Well, I can tell you one thing. He's pumped. He's really pumped. Good. <laughs> Good. I'm pumped. Yeah. I'll tell you, Mr. Wallace has been... Yeah, he's been really excited. excited. Yeah. He's I've very never seen enthused. a principal more excited. Yeah, than yeah. Mr. Oh, yeah. Good. he's been talking about it all year. I do that verse. An old warrior died today. A young mother knelt and prayed the sounds of battle in a country far away. There's a price to be paid. If you stay, freedom's one in many different ways. Oh, children, listen to what I say.
46. I'm just going to follow you. We've got to ride one of these trams, don't we? Mm. I guess right here, huh? Yeah. Board here for concourses A, B, and C. You sit with me? The doors are closing. Please keep clear and hold on for departure well, to concourse A. Yeah. That's why all this filming is going on. He's my hero. <laughs> you want, you want Get aboard. Ford baggage claim for flight 2232 is area D as in Delta. If you have a connecting flight, there are agents outside the gate lounge who will assist you on your next departure gate. Thank you and bless the bag. For two years, we've been in blackout all through Africa, Sicily, Italy, and France, England. And uh, when we got to New York, we were amazed at the lights. After two years of darkness, bright lights, uh, Neons flashing on and off. <laughs> we were like a bunch of country bumpkins walking around, staring at everything. Hold on a second. All right. Okay, Lou. Just follow me. Can you shake somebody's hand? How about this gal's hand? <laughs> <laughs> nice flight. Thank you. You're French. No, I'm German. Actually. German. Yeah. No. Hi, Ruthie. It was a good flight, hon. Wish you were here. I guess it's really hard to put my thoughts together right now. There are so many things that are going to be happening in the next few days that uh, I'm just going to take them one at a time. We would like to invite our customers on Delta Flight 16 to Paris Charles de Gaulle, to their zone 7 to board the stop. Zones 1 through 7 may now board through doorway 12. It's really hard after all these years to, to visualize all of these boats coming in, all these men rushing, and up there, the enemy is firing down on them. Over 3,000 men killed right through here. Seems unreal, a bad dream.
very impressive. After the aircraft comes to a complete stop, then you can unfasten your seatbelts and we'll be off to our day of adventure on Iwo Jima. Flight attendant for three for arrival cross check. Thank you. Well, what do you think being back? Well, I'll tell you. I have mixed emotions. It flooded me when I see Romajima, and when I saw the beach and the quarry, it flooded me with all kinds of emotions. And I, I could think of the names of Cobb and Sutcliffe and C.D. Parman and all the guys that was there, and Waterton, who was my good flamethrower that passed away. And when I set foot on that ground, I'll know I'm here. Well, here I am. After 61 years, it's sort of overwhelming to be here with my three sons when what I had before as a gunnery sergeant at 24 years age, the young kids that we had that were truly Americans, and they took the responsibility of doing what we had to do at that particular time. And we really believed, we really believed we were fighting for our freedom to keep the Japanese and the Germans away from America. And here we are. Hill 362, Hill 382, the Meat Grinder, Turkey Knob and others were just some of the names of ensuing battles on Iwo Jima that took a merciless toll on Marines during the 36 day onslaught. During a two week period after the flag raising on Iwo Jima, there was an American casualty every 90 seconds. Gains were measured in feet and each forward movement claimed more casualties. To the Marines, Iwo Jima was the ugliest place on the earth, Bob Sherrod wrote. 
But B-29 bombers who made emergency landings there called it the most beautiful. Over 60 years later and thousands of miles from the U.S. homeland, there's a yearly pilgrimage of old warriors who once again make their way back to this faraway, tiny, remote Pacific island to reflect, reminisce, remember, and pay respects to their comrades who fell on the black sands of Iwo Jima. Good morning, thank you for coming here today. Um, my heart's full today, getting ready to say goodbye to one of my heroes, Max Finley. And I've been reflecting the last 24 hours about the first time I met Max. Um, 10 years ago, I started my first film on D-Day. Max was a part of the D-Day invasion. And it's been a great honor to have had the opportunity, like I said, to have interviewed so many people that have served this country. I've done over a thousand interviews, if you can imagine. I kind of feel like I'm at the end of, my, end of a journey, too, today. I believe there's going to be a great reunion in heaven soon, or there probably is right now, of all these World War II veterans. All these men that I've lost, those of you who knew Max, just he's one of my heroes, and I know I'll see him soon. And uh, I thank you for this opportunity today. So I'm going to place this pin on his... 
casket. The core values in the Coast Guard are honor, respect, devotion to duty. That's what we live by. When I met Larry, he epitomizes those, uh, those values. He honors the vets and the active duty members serving today. He respects them tremendously, and he's devoted to capturing the testimonies because that is what we need to capture. I first met Larry Capetto back in 2004. At that time, I, I was the executive director of an association called Selected Independent Funeral Homes. And Larry approached us shortly after the completion of his first documentary, Lest They Be Forgotten, came to our offices in, in Deerfield, Illinois, and shared that video with us. And I have to tell you, from the moment that that video concluded, it was clear to me that it was a project that our association and its members most definitely needed to support. We made that video available through our members, and we have over the years watched the library of Larry's documentaries continue to grow. And there are two things in particular that have always impressed me about Larry and this project. The first is that it is the most noble of efforts, done for all the right reasons and nothing more, to pay tribute to the people that have made the supreme sacrifice for this country. And the other thing about Larry is that this entire project for him is nothing but a labor of love. And it is truly inspiring to see someone devote the time and the effort and the attention to something that he feels so passionately about. I can say to Larry Capetto that I truly respect what he has done and his recognition of veterans. The veterans in these front rows are the true heroes. On behalf of Hampshire Middle School, I thank you, Larry Capetto, for coming to our school. I am overwhelmed. I'm in a hallway. We just went through the lunchroom. You probably saw some of the video. And I, 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 I have no more words. This school it just really is special. And I love this school and, and everything this school represents, the teachers, the volunteers, the students. I mean, everybody's been so accommodating for this. And this is all for our veterans. You know, my heart is so full now. I could probably cry very easily, but I'm too tired to cry. But, you know, I... I just have never experienced anything like what I just did today. Last year was wonderful. This year, I think, has succeeded that. The high fives, the thank yous, the real sincere appreciation for our veterans and what they've done for our country. And how can we thank them enough, like I said? And I think this is a representation that reflects the spirit of America and our younger generation. And I'm very encouraged by that also. We're going to go do one more presentation and we'll be done. Do it, do, it, do another one, coach. Do another. One, two, three, USA! All right. Awesome. Thank you. What are we running here? Are we going to down and out? What are we doing? Yeah, I'm just going to go down and go to the right. All right. Ready? Yep. He's got the boots on. Yeah!
probably a Raiders fan. We're a grand old flag, we're a high flying flag, and forever a peace may wait. We're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true for the red, white, and blue, where there's never a coast or brag. But should all acquaintance be forgot, keep your eye on Blame lest they be forgotten day in Jay, Oklahoma. And the proclamation reads, Whereas when our nation was needing them the most, men and women, known as the greatest generation, rose to the call of the United States and gave unselfishly to protect the freedoms we hold so dear. And whereas these valiant citizens understood the cost of freedom, and therefore, as a result of their understanding, they willingly made the sacrifices necessary to preserve and protect our Constitution. And whereas the heroes of our time have once again answered the call of our nation to protect and defend our liberties, we are honored today to proclaim they will not be forgotten. And whereas we have learned from their bravery, heroism, and love of country that freedom isn't free, and we will forever be in debt to the fighting men and women of the United States military for keeping our nation strong. I, Mark Wall, Mayor of the City of Jay, do hereby declare today, October 26, 2011, lest they be forgotten day, and furthermore, I direct the seal of the City of Jay, Oklahoma, to be affixed to this document. Okay. Good we are in a gale force wind here just before halftime, and uh, we're looking forward to a great halftime show. We had a flyover earlier, and everything has been magical. It's been a wonderful time. So I'm going to get out and talk and give them one for the Gipper speech and uh, go Trojans. How many veterans do we have in the audience? Could you please stand so we can acknowledge you and thank you for your service? Can we thank our veterans for this service to our country? All around. Thank you. You know, how can we thank our veterans enough for what they've done for our country and for the freedoms that we have? I've spent the last two days talking to kids, students here, and challenging them with the thought that freedom is never free. And we need to give thought to the fact that there are men and women serving our country right now and past years that have fought and lost lives and limbs so that we can be free. Joining us live right now here on CP24 is documentary filmmaker Larry Capetto. You can watch his documentary, Lest They Be Forgotten, Canada, for free tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at Silver City, Yorktown. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you. You are an American, and yet you are tireless in your efforts to uncover stories about those who have fought and, and lived to, to, to speak from World War II, and I thank you for that. And, and I know that a lot of Canadians are very pleased to have a piece of their history put in documentary form. Why has this become such a labor of love for you? You know, 
People tell me I'm doing the work of God. It's like, it's like a ministry. It's a labor of love. Exactly what it is. Um, I feel compelled to tell the stories of these veterans. They're my eyes and my ears to something that happened in the case of the World War II veterans 60 years ago. You know, it's like going back in time and reliving an experience with them as they land on these beaches under enemy fires. They come home and transition back into civilian life. So tell us some of the stories that you've heard from these men. I, so much more to learn than just reading the books and probably than just seeing the documentary as well, actually listening to these guys for hours about this. It's been a, a very historic and educational time for me. The stories that these men are telling are very dramatic and powerful. In fact, a lot of these men have never talked about their experiences until recently. I think they can sense the urgency of the times. They're getting older. Most of them are in their 80s, so they're talking. Sometimes it's a little tough for these veterans to open up about their experiences. How, how do you go about doing that? Well, you know, I'm not after the blood and guts of war. I sit down and I start talking to them, and I'm after the personal account of what happened to them as 18, 19-year-old young men going to war. You know, what did it sound like? What did it look like? What did it feel like? And capturing that, and, and like I said, a lot of them have never shared their stories before or in depth, and I've been very successful in, in getting them to do that. What's unusual is, given the number of veterans you've talked to over the whole series of, of documentaries, that you still learn something new. Oh, definitely. This has been a very educational uh, experience for myself. And I go into schools a lot, Ira. I talk to kids in schools, and I challenge them with some of the thoughts of, you know, being born in a free country. Do you ever think about why you're free and the price that was paid for your freedoms yesterday and today? And it really, uh, it really challenges them to think about that. This man brings us one of the most important items in this whole hour. This is a documentary of World War II as told through the eyes and the ears and the voices from the people who lived through it. This is Mr. Larry Capetto. He is a documentary and filmmaker, and I want to say thank you for doing this. What a Dan, great effort. Well, thank you, BC, for taking this time to honor our veterans. Yeah, uh, well, we're just so pleased with what you've done because you've dedicated the last several years of your life to this. You know what? If you watch this with your family, your kids are going to learn so much. I feel that the lessons we learn from these veterans of World War II are what will carry our nation forward through the hard times we continue to face. Uh, 810, right now on Breakfast Television, Larry Capetto is here. You are an award-winning filmmaker. Well, Not just a filmmaker. Well, that's I'm very humble to say so. Yes, thanks. Uh, you are the author of such uh, videos as Lest They Be Forgotten, Volume... Uh, this is Volume 4, Return to Iwo Jima. Uh, we also have Lest They Be Forgotten here on the table with me. This is Volume 6, Vietnam Remembered. What did you learn from this? When you get involved in a project like this, you must take away some lesson. You know, th this project has changed my life. When I look back at these men and their lives, I see the integrity and the character that they possessed. The fact that they went to war when they had to go to war without any hesitation, and that really speaks volumes to me as a filmmaker and as American. For most people, D-Day is something they know from history books. 66 years ago today, Allied forces launched the invasion onto the beaches of Normandy. Tonight, 9 News reporter Dave Delosier tells us the story of two men. One is a Colorado veteran who was there that day. The other is trying to preserve the story. Okay, one, two... Three. History here is written with sound. Uh, one is this wireless. And pictures. Lewis, it's good to be back in your home. For the past seven years, Larry Capetto has been saving a story. He's probably one of the last remaining D-Day survivors around today. There are no words to describe what he feels. Those memories never go away. Which is why Larry Capetto is trying to save them. I feel like a guardian of the stories. So future generations will remember the 5,000 men who died that day on Omaha Beach, and they'll also remember the question men like Lewis Johnson still ask. Why me? Why was I spared? Why? History is filled with questions like that, but what Lewis Johnson wants us all to remember is simply this. Freedom is not free. We paid dearly. In Louisville, this is Dave DeLosier, 9 News. Larry Capetto has produced a series of films that tell the stories of veterans. The films are used by schools to help students gain an understanding of history and the sacrifices of our veterans. Kind of take us back and let us know, you know, why begin this type of work. Well, it's important that if we don't remember, we're going to forget. I entitled my series, Lest They Be Forgotten. And for the last 10 years, I've been on what I call an incredible journey, traveling North America, interviewing now, if you can imagine, a thousand veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, up to Iraq, and hearing stories a lot of times for the first time. And it's been an incredible journey for me, like I said, a very educational opportunity for me to, to learn what it was like to be 18 and 19 years old and fighting for your country, and then coming back home and transitioning back into civilian life. I've been serving my country through the lens of the camera for 10 years, and I'm back in Utah. It's been wonderful. It's been, I'll come full circle.
And when I went to Vietnam, I was 19 years old, just out of high school. I was very patriotic. I came from a military family, and I wanted to serve my country. Combat is hell. It's organized chaos. And some of the toughest things that I had to do in Vietnam was to write letters back home to families of their loved ones who was killed in combat. I went to Vietnam when I was 21 years old. One of my first assignments in Vietnam was I commanded a reconnaissance unit. As a brand new young lieutenant in Vietnam, of course, the first thing in your mind is you are terrified. They can train you and they can train you and they can train you, but until that first shot is fired, you do not know what you are going to do under fire. The keys to the successes I've had, and I just mentioned a few of them, is best contained in a quotation by Henry Ford. He said, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. I was your age, just a couple years older than most of you guys when I was wounded, when my life changed drastically. A lot of people assume I must be somebody really special because I can do these things despite my disability. No. They're very, very wrong. I am just an ordinary man who got put in a rather unusual situation, who found the proper approach to succeed. One day, we were under attack by Chinese soldiers, and uh, things get pretty hectic, and as a Ford observer, you're pretty busy. And you can hear bullets hit, and I, and I heard this bullet hit, a guy pretty close to me. Sometime later, I heard a helicopter come in, and the helicopter lit you know, behind the hill, and as I watched them load this guy on the helicopter, his leg fell off. War is something that uh, you don't ever want to take part of. What you bring home from it is uh, your scars. A lot of veterans bring home physical scars. A lot of veterans bring home emotional scars. I thought I was Mr. Tough Guy forever until I met Larry, and then I found out what I buried in my closet. A lot of emotional scars from what I saw over there. I can't even tell my wife I love her, can't hug her, and I'm still struggling with that today because you turn cold over there. You learn to hate, you learn to not get close to anybody because you don't know if you're going to see them in an hour. One of the things that America has finally got right is when people come home, we greet them. When I came back from Vietnam, I was in Saigon one day, 37 hours later, I was walking through Oakland Airport, technically a civilian, wearing my dress uniform for the first time with my ribbons, the first time I'd ever worn all of your ribbons. And some hippie chick spit on me. And if we learn nothing else from Vietnam, I hope we learn that we have to treat our veterans with respect. <laughs> I'm so blessed. I mean to have freedom to come home every day just what they went through we don't know Meant a lot. <laughs> Just 
just how much they put out there for us and brought freedom. I'm going to introduce you to Lewis Johnson again. He's my adopted father. My father died when I was 10 years old, and I've kind of adopted Lewis as his as my father and he said that was okay and uh, so it's been a good relationship that we've had but I don't know how many more times we'll get to work together but uh, he's 89 today and um, after we're, he's done talking I think we'll, we'll sing him happy birthday what do you think so but I love you Lou and I'm gonna give you the mic we got about 10 minutes and then uh, we'll let the kids sing you happy birthday how's that sound? Okay. Do you ever think you'd be 89 years old? I never thought I'd be 90 or 89. I've known him nine years, so wonderful, wonderful man. You know, we struggle every day to get our students to engage and to put their hearts into things, and they were fully engaged for the entire time because this was such a powerful message. And there's not, in my opinion, a more important message these students could hear and they heard it today and they connected and they're here 40 minutes after school to meet this amazing hero and that's such a testament and we're so blessed that you guys would share this with our kids. We're thankful for you and for him and for what you guys do every day. You've said it better than any textbook could say it, than we could ever say it. This is living history and this is, this is an experience that is not done when the chapter is over. I teach English. I work with um, a few of these people, and I didn't even know that they were had served. Some of the ones that came down yep. front, and that makes me sad. Me too. Mm -hmm. So that was helpful and meaningful today. The story I tell is uh, for effect, and apparently today it really did take effect. I don't mean to have people to cry, <clears throat> but it's the only way I can, I personally can uh, get the word out of what war is really like. There was 266 men in my company, and only 39 of us walked off the island. at 85% casualty rate. And I'm just glad I was one of the lucky ones. For the ones that didn't come back, thank you. Can we thank this Marine again for what he did? What an awesome man. Stand it up for you, Bill. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, <rock. laughs>
know what these veterans represent to our country. And to the work that I do with them. You know, I'm not afraid to tell them that I love them. And I realize what I've gotten myself into. I've interviewed about a thousand veterans in the last 10 years, and a lot of them have already died. And for a lot of them, it was the last time they were ever photographed or the last story. I interviewed a veteran in Utah, and two days later he died. I was holding his hand in intensive care, LDS hospital in Salt Lake City and he died the next day and he, after my interview with him he, he went into his bathroom in his home and he, he, he collapsed and went into a coma and he never recovered and he died and I came back six days later in a snowstorm in Salt Lake City and I landed and it was like a, a Hollywood movie I got out of my car in the snow I saw the snow flying and swirling and I saw these uniformed younger military personnel coming out into the snow, walking over to this gravesite, and we and we, we had a memorial service for Jack Homer, who was an Iwo Jima veteran, who drove the Higgins boats into, into battle and let the Marines out on September, uh, February 19, 1945. And traditionally at a, at a funeral, you give a flag, and you know we present that to the family. And I, I gave the family the last interview of, of this loved one, and, and everybody started to cry. And it was such a moving time for me when I did that. And it was just, and, and as I'm talking to you now, my mind is just, you know, thinking about all the veterans and why we're here. And just the pride that I have that you guys here. You all mean so much to me. It's the truth. What did I tell you yesterday? I don't want anybody to feel unimportant. And I'm sure everybody feels like that, you know? But this is, this is it. I mean, when these veterans walk in the room, it's not just these veterans, but it's all the veterans that they represent. You know, the Vietnam veterans, we've got World War II veterans, we got Korean War veterans, and they're back there thinking, I didn't do much. They come up to me and say, Larry, I'm just a small part of the day. Are you kidding? You, you, you're a small part of today? No, you're a huge part of today, you know? If you took an oath and served our country, that's huge. Okay, I'm back in my room. It is uh, cold outside. You know, how do you wrap up uh, three weeks of traveling in in a few words? I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm very grateful for the opportunities I've had here in Rochester, speaking four times today, starting with the television interview this morning on on Wham 13 with uh, Evan Baxter. And then the schools, the Rotary Luncheon was a blessing, and then the Senior um, Living Center we were at. So it's been a wonderful time here, very successful. 
my heart's been full, and it still is. And uh, I'm just really happy I've had these opportunities over the years to interview all these wonderful heroes of mine. And sadly, I've lost a lot of them. And trying to communicate now with our younger generation about the freedoms we have in our country and why they're free. It's a, it's a great challenge, a great task. I can't do it by myself, although I continue to try to. I need help. Maybe there's people out there that would like to come alongside and form an alliance with me and help me. So, um, I think uh, the stories speak for themselves and what the st students and teachers are saying in our schools reflect really the, the importance of the work that I'm doing. Um, I feel like a patriot. I hope I'm making a difference in our country. I've wanted to do something big and unique with my life that would impact my generation and affect people positively. Thank God I think I'm doing that. So I hope the work continues. I hope my book is written. I can get my thoughts out and write that book. And uh, just been a great opportunity. It's been an honor to serve my country with my camera and to touch many lives. So praise the Lord for that. Good night from Rochester, New York. Three flights home tomorrow. Okay.
I'm really proud of what we did today. I think I hope everyone else likes it and is proud of it too for our veterans. Well, it's been a great day, and I think we had the best in the world for the best guys out there and gals in the world, and that's our vets. And we're so honored and proud to be a part of this project, our small part, writing the song and singing it. And our sincere hope is that this will touch a lot of hearts out there, and I believe it will. We spent all day here at this wonderful studio, and I believe we've given you the best we got. So it's from our hearts, and uh, the guys that out there that really did what we wrote about, they're the guys that we need to thank, and thank them. Their sacrifice never forget. never forget They paid freedom's price What greater love than for someone To lay down their life Give up all their tomorrows Protecting you and I Never forget Never forget, never forget. We gotta keep remembering Unless they be forgotten Yes.